on occasion and uh, a couple of times I thought the relationships were going to be serious but um, as always they dropped me like a hot potato. I was a lot larger than I am now and uh, I always got the excuse I was just too fat and too ugly. There's more you love. So in the whole process since I started, I've lost about 120 pounds. You know, you go from, you know, being a guy that, you know, has no problem usually getting, picking up women or anything like that, or having women look at you, or, you know, to, you know, being a guy in a wheelchair and you see a, you know, you see a lady and she sees you and then she sees your wheelchair. You know, it's, it's different, you know. That's the way I think about it, you know. When I'm, you know, in my wheelchair and I'll see, I'll see a, you know, a, you know, attractive lady or something coming down the street, you know, my way, and she'll give me that look, you know, or, you know, and uh, then I see her look at the chair. And everybody's different. Some people, you can tell right off they're comfortable with the situation, and they'll have a conversation with you as if nothing's different. Other people there's always a level of discomfort and sometimes you never get past that. First and biggest barrier they face is attitudes. Attitudes of healthcare professionals, attitudes of family members, attitudes of partners. What happens is these individuals see them as asexual and say, oh you shouldn't be having sex. They stop talking to these individuals about sex. So guess what? They see themselves as asexual and they stop talking about it. I think most of the population sees the disabled population as asexual because it's easier. Most people can't imagine their parents having sex. Most people can't imagine someone with a disability having sex either. And if you can't imagine it, it can't be happening. Well, it can, and it does. People figure because you're in a wheelchair or disabled that your sex life is over. It's not true. No. I think for myself, uh, my experience may be a little bit different. When I socialize within the hearing community, I, I'm a very assertive person. I'm outgoing. I make my presence known. So um, I don't think that there are those mis misconceptions specifically about me because I, 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 I put myself out there. Um, I challenge people. I approach people quite easily. and. If someone does have any misconceptions, I challenge those right away. I get the assumption from the hearing community that I should be with a deaf person, or because I'm deaf, I would only have a deaf partner, and yeah, I do get that a lot. Sometimes they'll, they'll look at the chair and, you know, it makes me think of what I was.